Chinese dollar. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Insight Politics. I'm your host, Bob Beatty of the Washburn University Department of Political Science. Joining me at the table today is Mark Peterson, also of the Washburn Political Science faculty. Mark is handling the interviewing today as our topic is economic development in the city of Topeka. He will be exploring this topic with two of the key players in how economic development is likely to be pursued in the immediate future in Topeka. His first guest is 7th District City Council person Lisa Stubbs. She'll be followed by the Greater Topeka Chamber of Commerce's new president and CEO, Doug Kinsinger. Before we begin, we felt that it was important to disclose to our audience that Mark has some history with economic development, and particularly with the quarter cent sales tax campaign effort of last year. Prior to joining the Academy, Mark spent two decades working for various economic development promotion and financing organizations. He was approached last year about helping with the election campaign to win public approval of the sales tax dedicated to economic development and agreed, serving with several others on the ad hoc Go Topeka committee. Our first guest, Lisa Stubbs, was elected to the city council for the first time this past April. Councilperson Stubbs was a real Purdue Boilermaker, graduating with an industrial management engineering degree and worked with major American manufacturing companies. Since moving to Topeka with her husband Tom, she has pursued volunteer activities and is managing two adolescent children. She came to our attention as a guest for Inside Politics because of concerns she voiced regarding the potential breakdown of negotiations with the county commission over the actual allocation of the sales tax and the funding of the Go Topeka effort. The conflict, as most of you know, has since been resolved, but we thought she could help us understand the current council's position on economic development for Topeka. Mark? Thanks, Bob. Welcome, Councilperson Stubbs. Thank you very much. Um, I know that politicians, and especially elected politicians, are seldom critical of the politicians who they may have to work with again in the future, but I wonder, if you could take a moment to define for our audience uh, what the disagreement was between the city and the county over the disposition of the quarter cent sales tax and how that disagreement was resolved, what's, what's in the agreement. Mm -hmm. Um, the disagreement was basically over uh, what will hopefully be additional monies that will come in above and beyond uh, uh, a number that had been chosen of approximately 4.8 million that they had said would be the uh, portion that would go for economic development. Um, and now that we have estimates of sales tax that should be substantially uh, greater than that, anywhere is upward to 7 million to 7.3 million. It was that additional two to two and a half million dollars uh, that really had not been designated uh, officially uh, to go to economic development as to who would get it and what it would be used for. Okay, and so the ultimate resolution of that, as I understand it, has been that the county is going, or that, excuse me, that the county and the city are going to share jointly in the money over and above 4.8 million for infrastructure, and most specifically the county's interested in bridges, we understand? Correct, and actually I do believe it was even designated further than just infrastructure. They designated it for bridges, uh, which bridges are certainly a portion of infrastructure, uh, but it gives it a much narrower scope of infrastructure uh, than just any type of infrastructure that it would be used for. Um, so anything above that 4.8 million at this point will be split evenly uh, between the county and the city and will be uh, used for bridges. Okay. And uh, as I recall the numbers, um, Shawnee County population is about 160, 65,000. Mm -hmm. Topeka is about 121. Mm -hmm. So that means the county represents about a quarter uh, of the citizens, uh, with Topeka being the, the central retailing and, and mm -hmm. uh, business community in the county. Um, is, is the, did the county advance the arguments on the basis that they, they were entitled to a quarter share of the quarter cent? Mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, or was there some other set of arguments that were put forth as justification for using the additional money in this fashion? Mm -hmm. 
Um, actually, I think they uh, uh, initially wanted all of it. Uh, they had uh, basically said that the 4.8 was the, as they put it, cap that had been put on economic development and therefore anything above that on the ballot it mentioned would go for countywide infrastructure. Um, and so that they felt like they would get all of the additional funds, uh, which is troublesome obviously uh, because they do manage only that portion of the county that is outside the city limits. And as I like to tell people, you need to remember the city is in the county and we are uh, the majority. Uh, of the county as far as uh, constituency is concerned. And so it really was not appropriate for them to have 100% of the extra monies uh, going for infrastructure outside the city limit and into the county. Um, I think um, part of our discussions went back to whether or not we felt like there had been a cap set on whether or not 4.8 was a fixed number that we could not go above for economic development. Uh, they felt like that it was. Um, Quite honestly, they hold the bigger stick and that they can put the vote back up to uh, reject the quarters and sales mm. tax. So there was certainly an incentive uh, for the city to uh, come up with uh, an agreement between us that, that we could live with. And I recall that that threat was made. Yes. Well, uh, on a slightly different uh, issue associated with this, um, we've heard the name of Go Topeka mm -hmm. um, used a number of times. and. Um, uh, Go Topeka was uh, an organization in existence at the time that the, uh, that the campaign was carried on. Um, is there a formal um, commitment to Go Topeka that they will have a managerial responsibility in the use of these funds? What, what's the role of Go Topeka in using the quarter cent sales tax? Right now there is not an official role because we have not contracted with them. Uh, we certainly could contract with somebody else. Uh, it is uh, written up in the interlocal agreement that, that that could be done. However, I think that's very unlikely. Uh, Go Topeka is a great uh, entity to, to work with and we're in the process now of getting ready to formulate that contract uh, between uh, the JEDO, which is the Joint Economic Development Organization, and Go Topeka. And so once that is firmed up and signed by both sides, it will be official, but uh, at this point it's, it's still in the making stage. And uh, assuming that that uh, formal agreement is entered into, um, will, uh, will Go Topeka make recommendations to the city as to the use of the money, or will it be actually given a fiduciary responsibility to spend those tax dollars? Uh, well, that probably depends on how that contract is written up uh, from the JETO committee, which is a combination of uh, city and county elected officials. Um, it would be my hope uh, that the JETO committee would form the basis uh, for the, the disbursement of those funds and give a broad overview of how they can be spent, and then basically to turn over the day-to-day -day, uh, running of that particular economic development program to the Go Topeka people, that we don't need to micromanage it, so to speak, but we can you know, set the outline for how it should run, give them the responsibility, obviously have uh, you know, updates periodically uh, uh, throughout the year as to how things are going, and, and if something were to come up that they needed our input, of course, uh, but really to give that response responsibility over to them. Okay. Um, we only have a little bit of time left, but I wonder if, if you had your druthers, if mm -hmm. you got to be the fly on the wall, what would you most like to see that $4.8 million used for? What, what sorts of purposes? Well, uh, I've had the uh, uh, privilege of serving on the land use portion of the comprehensive plan that we're developing now. We've been a committee for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I'm slanted a little bit uh, because of that. Uh, we have a lot of goals for our city as far as we want to, where we want to see growth and development. Uh, we have some uh, targeted areas where we would like to see uh, industrial and, and businesses to concentrate in. So I guess I would want to pick one of those areas to really concentrate on, to kind of focus your funds so you can really see something for what you've done and do everything that we can to encourage development of that area, the infrastructure that's needed, uh, to bring the job training uh, to the people so that they can be trained and skilled for those kinds of jobs. It's kind of, a, I want it to be a, a very well-rounded program in one particular focused area and really hit it hard. Terrific. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. When we come back, the discussion about Topeka's economic development future will continue when Mark talks with Doug Kinsinger, President and CEO of the Greater Topeka Chamber of Commerce. Wildfire, 
Over two million acres of our forests and rangelands burn each year. Hundreds of homes are destroyed, and it can take over 150,000 firefighters and a billion dollars to bring the fires under control. Many of these fires are due to human carelessness, but it only takes one person to prevent it all. Be careful when visiting the wildlands. For more information, contact your local fire protection agency, state forestry office, or the USDA Forest Service. Plant a tree for your tomorrow. I can make a difference. The Arbor Day Foundation can show you how to make a difference, too. In your hands, you have the power to change our world. You can improve the environment, help your community, and build a better tomorrow. You can plant a tree. Write the National Arbor Day Foundation and support Tree City USA, where you live. Plant a tree today for all the world to share. Welcome back to Inside Politics. Doug Kinsinger has just recently become the Greater Topeka Chamber of Commerce's CEO. He came here from Pensacola, Florida, where he was chamber president for four years, and prior to that, he was president of the San Angelo, Texas Chamber of Commerce for seven years. Doug has made a career working with chambers, beginning before he even graduated from the University of Northern Iowa in 1981. One of the notable things on his resume that we guess probably was instrumental in his selection as Topeka's chamber executive was his role in the recruitment of GE Power Systems to Pensacola while he was the executive there. With that, I'll turn it over to Mark. Thanks, Bob. Welcome, Doug. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation. It's, uh, it's pure serendipity, but this morning the Capital Journal published a rousing editorial uh, in support of economic development. I wondered if there was anything about it that you'd like to add or comment upon. Well, it, it was positive to note. Uh, I think it was reflecting upon the work that the city and county had done on the interlocal agreement. And I think most people who monitored that realized that there was uh, some negotiations, some work that needed to be done, but the most important thing was that they did come to a rational, fair agreement am amongst both bodies. I think they were noting that it was important that the teamwork now begins. For any town to really work together or to accomplish anything, it has to work together. And I'm very encouraged. I've met with all of the elected officials individually, and I feel very confident and optimistic that we will be working together and we'll have great success, especially in the world of creating jobs for our future. Good. Um, you, you, part of your background was San Angelo. Texas is actually uh, sort of important in the tale of this thing. Uh, I think the city that started this business of using a local option tax to support economic development uh, was Amarillo, and uh, they've been talked about in economic development circles for years as finding the resources to, uh, to really take on uh, economic development. Um, having come uh, not exactly near Amarillo, Texas is a big place. Um, what do you think about this, uh, uh, the use of tax resources uh, to help attract economic development? There are actually now over 300 cities in the state of Texas who have enacted the economic development sales tax to be more competitive. And that was a state especially, that was really begun in the early 1990s when the oil and energy crisis was uh, the bust had hit bottom, and Texas was really on its last legs. It had really, this, the state of Texas really developed extremely well with very high quality jobs, very high paying jobs over that next 10 years. And I think many of them, many individuals would state that that tax was a key part, especially it was designed in a way that only the more rural communities, not the major metropolitan areas, the cities of Dallas, Houston, Austin, Tony, Austin San Antonio, uh, Corpus Christi and uh, uh, Fort Worth and El Paso were exempted from that tax. So it was designed to try and help the cities who needed the most help. Um, those communities are the ones that, that excelled. And I would say that incentives has become the name of the game across our nation. Even in our community's history and, and in other communities' histories, normally the, the towns that grew were the ones who maybe offered that free land for the railroad to come or made that first little effort to try and get a business started. And this is not something that's new. It's just something that's perhaps uh, a little bit more emphasized now to be competitive. 
And uh, as I recall, I think the uh, Texas economic recovery had a little something to do with the fellow named Bush getting to the White House, as a matter of fact. It, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. In fact, uh, I went to another state following him in Florida that also had a Bush. So. <laughs> Um, there are lots of different models of economic development. Uh, the, the business has sort of gone through a cycle since its beginning um, back in Alabama in the 1930s, and we've gone from uh, recruiting, uh, smokestack chasing, recruiting industries in production facilities, um, to focusing on um, clusters of uh, economic opportunity within the existing community, to using resources to promote homegrown entrepreneurialism, to well, places like Chattanooga, for example, who built uh, tourist attractions and focused on quality of life as the principal mm -hmm. tool for attracting economic development. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think, what model do you think Topeka is most likely to get benefit from and the one we're most likely to try? Well, I think any community who's aggressive is going to try a little element of all of those. But our direction is going to be, we have uh, just recently contracted with a, a, a national consulting firm by the name of uh, Wadley Donovan, who will help us define our target markets of industry clusters that we'll be going after, the kinds of businesses that we think are best suited here. That doesn't mean we will be out smokestack chasing or recruiting solely new companies, because really the, the rule of thumb is that 80% of our jobs for the future should come and will come if we do our job properly from local companies like SBG and Goodyear and Hallmark and others. But really to prepare for the future, we need a diversified economy and we need industries uh, that are going to be growing industries for the future. So we need to look at new areas of technology, new areas of the economy. Um, ten years ago, we all were beginning to get excited about the dot-com craze. The internet was just starting and everybody was thinking, boy, that's, in fact, five years ago, I think many of us were hoping and wishing we had money in, in that. Now, five years later, aren't we glad? Mm -hmm. uh, so how much the, how quickly the economy can change, but the point is that we need to continue to diversify the economy. And we'll be looking for areas, even that are based here at Washburn, areas of excellence that we can build on, whether it be accounting or finance or international law or whatever the field may be that we feel we can build a local employment base on, that we can be, begin to build a, a national presence that we can attract employers to take advantage of. I, I note that Topeka has uh, the, the circulation of the fish that got away story about our dot-com um, business. I've forgotten the name of it that was here a few years and then went to uh, California. It uh, started with an N, uh, but it, I cannot think of it right we, now. We, that that's, that mm -hmm. story is no longer in circulation since the, the meltdown. But, but to give you the example, there are other companies, for example, Cubis. Cubis. Uh, right. the, uh, software video compression company. They are doing business with Disney and, and other uh, major uh, studios that are compressing video uh, and uh, really are, are up to almost 50 employees. That is the kind of the technology that has a good basis here that we need to be doing things to try and support and grow and who knows what that could eventually lead to you know, five or 10 years from now. Surely. A um, little change of subject. Um, I mentioned this, uh, discussed this with uh, Councilwoman Stubbs as well. Um, we have an organization here in town that has been closely associated with the quarter cent sales tax, uh, and yet no formal understandings, as we understand it, have, have occurred, and that's Go Topeka. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the Chamber's relation to Go Topeka and what you see Go Topeka's role being in, in the use of these revenues. Go, to, Go Topeka was started approximately two years ago by a group of business leaders and, and some government officials saying we wanted to be more aggressive in the area of economic development. At that point, the Chamber really did not have any resources, um, uh, much finances to do much in the area of, of economic development. Go Topeka was formed to try and be more aggressive, raise some additional private dollars, but look at the long-range competitive nature of economic development and what we'd have to do to be competitive. I think it educated the community on the need for more resources. It was successful in getting people to support economic development. And now the role between the Chamber and Go Topeka, essentially we're working very, very closely together. 
I am the president of the Chamber of Commerce, but also I'm the president of Go Topeka. We have staff in both areas, but they meet together or are housed in the same building. And essentially the role of the Chamber is to build the right economic climate to make this attractive community, the right quality of life, to address legislative issues, transportation issues, to make it the right climate or economic environment for business to thrive. Go Topeka's role is to be the marketing arm to try and help local business grow, help them expand, solve the problems, and help attract new companies. So you've got the right environment, and then you've got the marketing arm in Go Topeka. I see. Okay. Um, I'm getting a signal that we're just about out of time. Unfortunately, I wanted to ask you about the process of recruiting GE Power Systems to Pensacola, but maybe we can uh, have you back for the first shovel turning and uh, you can tell us what this process is about. Sure. Thanks very much. Thanks for, the Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Bob. We'll be right back with some closing comments from myself and Mark Peterson. Let's talk about dying. Everybody's got to do it, but nobody wants to talk about it. So talking about organ donation is even harder, especially with your family. Because to talk about that, you got to admit you're going to die. And that's hard. Maybe people think if they don't talk about it, it won't happen. You know what? That's exactly what happens with organ donation. If you don't talk to your family about it, it won't happen. Yeah, it's kind of creepy, maybe weird, but you get to give the biggest gift in the whole world, life. So this is what I think. Organ donation is not about dying. It's about living. Talk to your family about living. Talk to your family about donating life. Welcome back to Inside Politics. Well, Mark, we've uh, visited with uh, Lisa Stubbs and Doug Kinsinger. And uh, as a relative newcomer to Topeka, myself, let me allow me to play a little bit of the cynic. Uh, Topeka has not had a wonderful past, I've heard, in uh, economic development and also recognizing what may be good for the city. For example, I've heard that both the Charles Curtis House and the Brown v. Board, Monroe School Building were almost demolished in, in the last period of time. Luckily, they're still there. Uh, the acrimony, the fighting over the quarter cent sales tax, I would maybe argue doesn't bode well for the future of uh, figuring out what to do with this money. Uh, am I being too cynical about this, or how would you respond to that? Uh, I. I'm not sure I classify it as cynicism, perhaps skepticism, and I think skepticism is probably um, a good way to approach all of this. Um, I think there are a couple of positives to be noted. Uh, I think that Topeka is, uh, uh, has come to the recognition that being the state capital and therefore sort of recession proof because uh, the bureaucracy will always be there, the revenue will always flow in. Uh, I think that I think that we're beginning to realize that uh, maybe that's a little too self-satisfied uh, and uh, and uh, perhaps not quite as reliable uh, as it once was. Uh, I think that the acrimony amongst elected officials reflects um, the difficulty with which the quarter cent sales tax was passed. Um, it was a narrow election. Uh, elections to uh, tax oneself are usually hard fought uh, and difficult to win. Um, but I think that there, uh, there is some division in the community over that issue. I think that um, the chamber's on the right tack. Uh, the creation of Go Topeka, um, putting this program into the hands uh, of some individuals who understand modern economic development, not just leaving it up to uh, an ad hoc committee of downtown businessmen uh, or realtors or something like that, uh, is a good way to go. We've obviously got uh, a first-rate professional in Doug Kinzinger, and I think that's going to be of benefit to the community. But uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Uh, what we have is a commitment to spend $4.8 million 
per year for the next four years, or beginning in 2003. Uh, if we don't put that money to good use, if it doesn't result uh, in significant developments, I doubt seriously the voters are going to be enthusiastic about doing it again. Uh, and uh, if it does turn into a boondoggle, uh, it's going to be a big and obvious one. Uh, it's going to turn a lot of people off. Um, so I think we've got a shot, and I think we've got an opportunity to do it right, and I think that there probably needs to be much more open and extensive discourse in the community over just what uh, we're going to do with that money. And is that a bit of a problem? Has there been enough discourse? Has there been enough discussion about what to do with $4.8 million? Um, well, enough is a difficult term to define. There's been a lot of talk. Um, I'm not sure that uh, all segments of the community have been heard from. In some respects, hearing from all segments of the community may just raise a cacophony of opinion. Uh, I think there needs to be the development of a clear consensus. I think that consensus needs to be well articulated. And I think there needs to be real leadership uh, for the consensus that's settled on with people taking responsibility for the decision that they've made, standing up. Uh, and saying I'm for it, and I'm going to work for it, and I'm going to count my success uh, on the basis of how this thing turns out. All right. Well, if we see, if and when we see that leadership occur, we'll probably have to bring them right back on to this program. Thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. Join us for the next program with Secretary of State of the State of Kansas, Ron Thornburg. But for now, it's time for us to go. That the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you ask what you can do for your country.